this is one of my favorite um, uh, separation of variable problems because it's going to look like something out of the, off the moon, something really crazy. This dv dt equals negative kv. But let me break it down for you a little bit. It says when air is released from a balloon. So let's say you have this balloon and you're releasing the air and what they're saying is the rate of the volume decrease is proportional to the volume. So in other words, the smaller the volume, the slower the what? Let's say that again. It says the rate of decrease of volume of the balloon is proportional to the volume. So when the volume is big, what's the rate? Big. Okay. What about when the volume is small? It's small. Okay. So what happens is, is that the bigger it is, the, the greater the number. The smaller it is, the smaller the rate. So therefore, this makes sense. dv dt equals v, but times some proportional constant. It's not over v, right? Times v. And then where'd this negative come from? It's getting smaller, right? So as the volume gets smaller, the rate goes with it. But this is a decreasing amount. So let's write it dv dt equals negative k times v. Now k is a different variable than t. So when you separate these, which ones are going to be on the left side of the equation? dv and what? What other variable? Yeah, you can just put the v. I'm just going to put the v under there. That's okay. Just put the v under there. Then you have the negative k on this side. And we need the dt in the numerator, so we're just going to multiply this by dt. Let me had that part. Good. So when we integrate now, what's the integration, what's the antiderivative of dv over v? Natural log of v. And the antiderivative of negative k dt is just negative k times t. Don't forget your plus C. Right? Now, they did give us a value to deal with here. It says the initial volume of the balloon is V0. In other words, at T equals 0, what's V? V0. Okay. So, we're going to find C. When t equals 0, negative k times 0, the volume is v0. Okay? So this goes to 0. What's c? What's c going to be? Plus 0. This will just be the natural log of v0. Write that down. Now we're ready for the final construction here. Natural log of V equals negative K times T plus the natural log of V zero. Okay, what are you going to solve for? What are we solving for in part A? Find what? Yeah, find the volume. So we want to find V. So what are you going to do to this to find V? What are you going to do to this to find V? I know the natural log of V. How do I find V? E to the negative KT plus natural log of V0 is equal to V. Oh, you're so close. Because then you can say E to the negative KT times times, right, e to the log base e of v0. 
is equal to v. What's e to the log base e of v0? v0 times e to the negative kt equals v. Now, I love this equation because do you remember two years ago when we did that M&M lab and we started with 100 M&Ms and then we dumped them and then we counted how many? There were like 48. And you started with an amount and you ended with an amount. And then you had one roll for T. Remember that? Any kind of exponential growth VK or growth equation was starting amount E to the KT equal to V. Did you ever wonder where they got that formula, though? Where that even came from? I mean, it seemed kind of made up, didn't it? Well, it's not. This is what happens when you have dv dt proportional to v. This exponential dk is you start with an amount and you end with amount when it's connected to the rate. When the rate is proportional to the amount, that's what you get. That's why Euler was such a genius is he was able to take something algebraic and turn it into something exponential. Something calculus bound into something exponential. This is the radioactive decay e equation that we saw two years ago. And it all comes from saying the rate is proportional to the amount. Oh, what, what if this were positive? What would happen to this equation? It wouldn't be a decay equation. What would it be? It would be a growth equation. Oh, well, let's say we took money and called this P principle E to the KT equals your final amount of money. Uh, what do we call it? Y? I can't remember what we called it. But that's your PERT formula. That's the PERT formula for exponential growth of money. So when your rate is proportional to your amount, you get the exponential decay and growth formula. Very cool. Now, part B here says find an expression for k of k for the time. So you're looking for time when the volume equals v0 over 2. So I need to take my answer here. I need to take my answer. And v is v0 over 2. And v0 e to the negative kt, right? Uh, what cancels out? The V zeros, right? And so now we have one half e to the negative kt. How can we solve for t? Take the natural log of both sides. Am I losing you? Is this this isn't too hard, is it? And so you're going to get. Natural log of e to the negative kt is negative kt equals the natural log of one half. So if, if I solve for t, I'm going to get the natural log of one half over negative k is going to be equal to t. That's the answer for that ib. Do you remember what v0 over 2 when you go from V0 to V0 over 2, what that was called? When we were working with uranium or we were working with, that's a half-life. What you just found here was the half-life. That's the value of T for the half-life. Isn't that sweet how math comes together and makes sense? That's what, what's happening here. This is a half-life problem. This is an exponential decay problem. All right, you're going to do number four, uh, eight, and number a different four. Would you look at this number four or eight real quick? I want to give this on video too. It says, given the initial value problem, dy dx equal y minus y squared. I'm not finding c this time, but I want you to solve for y. So what do you do first? You tell me you've learned this. What goes on the left side? dy and what else? Yeah, y minus y squared equal to what? 1 dx. Now I'm going to integrate those. How are you going to integrate dx? x. How are you going to integrate this? Partial fractions, of course. 